What's up, guys, and welcome back to my channel where we learn, do, and talk about photography until we're sick of it. And uh, uh, today I'm coming to you from my living room, so maybe you could see through the shades the beautiful golden hues streaming through for what looks to be an incredible upcoming sunset, which we don't want to miss. But I actually am kicking off the video here because I have all my cameras set up to document the process of a song that I'm writing. Maybe that's something I'll share on the channel, maybe not. I have mentioned that I would like to broaden the topic of the channel uh, beyond just the photographic topic to talk about other expressive practices and creative disciplines. If that interests you at all, please be sure to leave a comment or a thumbs up. Uh, really my struggle right now, the only thing that keeps me from delving into those topics is I don't know really how to tell the story of like writing a song or a story in the medium of a video as aptly as making a photo. So fortunately we do have some photo opportunities for today or else I don't know what I would show you. All right, so uh, time is a waste then. We'll get out of the house into the outdoors where we like it and catch some country sunset photos. to ably see what I've got my sights set on here aside from one of our finest manufactured landscapes. I believe that I'm going to make just a fine, if not absolutely gorgeous photograph here. The sun is just about to the horizon. We're going to get the sun uh, peeking out over the tops of these crops. Challenges here will be exposure, so I may bracket this and uh, if there's an opportunity later and I do find the brackets to be useful, uh, I'll introduce the concept of exposure bracketing for those of you who are beginners and may not be familiar with it. Uh, but for now, I'm going to make sure that I get the sun as it sits right behind that barn. would also be ideal if I can compose to incorporate some of this curvy road, because if you've uh, had an eye on my Instagram feed lately, you will have noticed that it is uh, absolutely ate up with curvy roads. And uh, uh, there's always room for more. It may be like the first six pictures you see in the feed, but there's always room for more. And uh, also here over to camera right, apologize for a little wind. Um, I can probably show you a few sightly puddles on the ground remaining from the last rainfall as well, and can probably make a couple photographs to incorporate that element also. back in the studio. So I feel like this video is basically a tour of all the spaces that I use in my life, uh, outdoors and indoors. So while I was in the field, I promised that if I found an HDR merger to be useful, that I would walk you through that process. I know that videos like this were really helpful for me when I was learning those kinds of techniques. And uh, so for one image that I captured, uh, which I'll show you on the screen now, um, a single exposure was fine. Uh, if I were very critical of this photo, I might say that I wish I got the background slightly more in focus, but I think it's going to look okay on Instagram, maybe even depending on the viewing size of your screen, good in this video. For the second photo that I took, I did find an HDR merger to be helpful because the scene did just slightly exceed the exposure latitude of my camera. And I'll explain what I mean by that in just a second. But what was involved in the field was making a, a bright and a dark exposure. I will display those on the screen now. So uh, for the bright exposure, you'll see that the, uh, the detail is lost in the sun, right? That's clipped to pure white but there, it did preserve good, appropriate detail in the foreground, even though for the neutral exposure that was slightly underexposed. But I can lift the exposure in post-processing and make that look acceptable. For the darker exposure that I had to make to keep the sky from clipping, if I raise the exposure in post-processing, you see that the foreground is quite noisy. So for landscape photography, your, your goal as the camera operator is basically to capture as much of the scene as you can with a single exposure. 
But if you run into limitations because you uh, maybe have an older camera or a more inexpensive camera or the dynamics of the scene are extreme, you may run into an instance like I did where uh, that's not possible and it's at least beneficial um, to capture multiple exposures and merge all that data together in the computer. And I'm gonna walk you through that process right now because it is quite simple. And I think you may find a great benefit to this uh, process. So you can see that a, a merge is already made of these photos in Lightroom. There is, if this is the only, no. Oh. So if this is the only manipulation you have, there are some specialized software you can buy that is perhaps cheaper or more tenable for your practice than Adobe Lightroom. But I, for my money, $10 a month, I, get, I definitely get $10 uh, uh, use of Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop each month out of this software suite. So I do highly recommend it. And the process is very streamlined and simple. Uh, so uh, it has combined the exposures that I made into this bracket because I've already merged them, but I will walk you through the process. So I believe I used these two, this bright exposure and this middle exposure. And then in Adobe Lightroom, I can just right click them and go to uh, photo merge and choose HDR. And uh, Lightroom will now also allow you to merge in addition to stitch panoramas, stitched panoramas in HDR. So that's quite cool. But in this instance, I just need a simple HDR merger. I'll pull up this screen and um, while it creates the HDR preview, uh, you'll see that I can allow it to select auto settings, right? So it can sort of give us a baseline to start with. And you see that it's also put a red mask here and that is from de the deghosting algorithm, which will sort of look through all the exposures and see if anything has changed between the exposures. So in this instance, I sort of expected maybe the, because it was windy, as you'll recall, maybe the uh, corn would blow around or something. And those are the kinds of things that you'll see that Lightroom can make special adaptive masks for to mask out that ghosting effect or the effect of having things that are have moved between the frames. Um, and so in this instance, it's only finding some, maybe some grasses that have blown here in this bottom left corner, but, but I will allow Lightroom to intelligently, um, mask out the things that have changed between the exposures and hit the merge button. And that's going to create a photo merge. And then I'll have a, a single digital negative raw file then that I can work with. That's got the, uh, uh, the information from the brightest parts of the scene from the dark exposures and the darkest parts of the scene from the bright exposures and have good clean detail throughout. Okay. Uh, I also wanted to close out this video by mentioning that I've been teasing an R7 video. Uh, I've, uh, next week marks the one year anniversary of my acquiring the R7. So I've got a lot of good information to give out about that. And I think it's going to be a great review and I've been working on it for a few weeks now. So in that video, I'll tell you, uh, what I love about the R7, what's bugged me about it after a year of use, uh, kind of where it sits in the camera lineup now, because more cameras have come out since the camera was introduced a year ago, uh, maybe if it's still a good value. And I've also been scouring the reviews from last year for three and answered unanswered questions. And so I'm going to take the opportunity a year later to address your three most frequently asked unanswered questions about the R7. And that whole review is coming out next week. So I hope you'll stick around for that. And until I see you guys next time, you keep an eye out and a foot forward. And thank you for watching. Bye.